television in front of 15 million people is the place to discuss classified information. You see that? And with that, they touched off a kind of McCarthyistic witch hunt against Ted uh, Cruz. It was shut down within about a day and a half. Nevertheless, there were people saying, we need to investigate him because he mentioned some numbers about our super secret program. That's the kind of paranoia we need to push back against. Now, let's take a look at the drug war. This is an old running drug war. But we need to understand how this is coming to us and what it is doing to destroy our society. Look at these two stories real quickly. Now, when we look at the old war on drugs, we just had our drug czar say it is a complete failure. Nevertheless, like Chris Christie, he wants to continue to prosecute it. He's someone who understands that there's a medical treatment side to it, but he wants to prosecute it. And what we need to look at is how it has totally corrupted our law enforcement, for example. Two stories focusing on that one aspect of the failed war on drugs. This particular one from the Institute of Justice. Cops seized over $107,000 from a couple and they didn't charge them with a crime. These people were speeding, they pulled them over, they say a drug dog sniffed and indicated on the car, so then they searched the car and found $107,000. Now, the people say that it was taken from uh, savings and from a disabilities payment. They were on their way to get treatment for their son. Nevertheless, after three years, they've not been able to recover that cash. This is yet another case. There's been 62,000 seizures since 9-11 where the police did not use warrants, did not even charge the owners with the crime, but just stole the cash. And of course, it's very prevalent in Illinois where this took place. They said they've received more than $186 million in federal forfeiture. They call it a civil forfeiture because they don't press charges against you they don't give you your due process. So the fiction of civil asset forfeiture has turned our police into thieves, into literal highway robbers. When we come back, I'm gonna tell you how one small town was turned into money launderers in the war on drugs. Stay with us, we'll be right back. No one will go to the New York Times or care that it's even admitted that the government's hatching most of the terror plots. Or people will say, what are you doing? Endorsing radical Islam, saying it doesn't exist? I didn't say that. I said our criminal government is arming them, aiding and abetting them, protecting them to attack and kill us so they can take our freedoms. That's what I said. Never water yourself down just because someone can't handle you at 100 proof. It's the Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, Glenn Beck, and everybody else that runs around claiming that I'm saying there aren't any real Muslim terrorists. That's a load of crud, and you know it. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a, a workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all in InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity, 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, InfoWars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll free 888 253 3139. Now, in the last segment, we were talking about something that's become a long term game. This goes back to the 1980s and, of course, that civil asset forfeiture. But now we see a small town police force taking this to a completely different level of corruption. This was on the Drudge Report today, talking about the small city of Bow Harbor, laundering millions, millions from the small police department and drugs to Caracas, Venezuela, connections to the president there, President Maduro. This village police force broke the law, said a former top DE agent. They wired drug money to known drug traffickers and money launderers. They say they sent drug money to a well-known trafficker, a cash smuggler, a money launderer, more than $4 million in all. Where does a small town police department come up with this kind of money? It's absolutely amazing to see this story. They say in spite of U.S. warnings about the emergence of the country as a major hub for cocaine, that'd be Venezuela, the police never investigated the people to whom they were sending millions in drug proceeds, including a host of individuals with criminal records. They say, it's absurd. You're a Bell Harbor police officer. Your jurisdiction is local, said a former DEA chief uh, from New York. He said, they were just laundering money for the sake of laundering money. Yeah, you know, like HSBC and UBS, these big banks who laundered money. They even gave the Sinaloa cartel their own checkout window, HS HSBC did. What did they get for that? A very small slap on the wrist, a very small fine. I don't think you're even going to see that happen to this police department. Now, they say among the recipients was a guy named William Amaro, a 48-year-old assistant to President Maduro, a longtime friend of his. He got $45,000 on one day. The next day, they did it again. He got $37,000. Four more times, the cops sent money to his account a quarter of a million dollars nearly in all. And as I pointed out before, that was $4 million. I say, making the payments all the more remarkable, the U.S. government was then conducting investigations in the Venezuelan government leaders' involvement in the drug trade, especially the criminal groups using the nation as a shipping point. They say U.S. studies show that 24% of cocaine produced in South America channeled through that company. Now, here's the bottom line. This is an undercover sting operation run by a tiny, small uh, police department in Bell Harbor, small town. It generated millions of dollars, however, for that police task force, and they never made a single arrest. Of course, they got the money. 
As one lawyer in South Florida said, I can't think of a more podunk town than Ball Harbor. Not in a bad way, but in the sense that these cops would have otherwise been stopping traffic and shooting radar. <laughs> As if we really need them to do that. He says, in reality, they were being money launderers. The minute they started doing busts, it would have been all over. But of course it wasn't. It was simply about corrupting the police. And that's what we've seen with the war on drugs, the failed war on drugs. Understand it's not getting anybody off of drug addiction. Now there's another war that's developing, of course, and that's the one in the presidential campaign. This war is shaping up between Clinton and Trump. And as part of that, we see Hillary attacking Trump on the so-called war on women. Here's a clip. What he said yesterday about you, does that have to do with your gender? Is that part of what's going on? He, oh, he thrives on that kind of uh, exchange. I think he has to answer for what he says, and I assume that, uh, you know, others will, um, you know, make the larger point about his language. It's not the first time he's demonstrated a you know, penchant for sexism. Now joining me now is Leanne McAdoo, and of course, Leanne, uh, Trump wasted no time in firing back at Hillary Clinton, yeah. uh, reminding her that she's throwing stones in a glass house. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> now, we knew that the Democratic Party was going to be using this war on women because, of course, Hillary would be their front runner. Uh, but I don't think that the, that the DNC expected to be going up against a candidate that has absolutely no filter. So he tweeted this out on uh, December 26th. He says, Hillary Clinton has announced that she is letting her husband out to campaign but he's demonstrated a penchant for sexism. So inappropriate. <laughs> so he's basically <laughs> saying, look, be careful, because if you want to go there, I'm going to go there with you, Hillary. And, um, you know, so it, it's just interesting to see that now they're, they're establishing media, uh, the DNC, they're having to deal with this sort of firecracker that they weren't expecting. And so let's take a look at how the, the DNC is framing this story. Here is uh, the DNC chair, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Donald Trump uh, or any candidate on the other side of the aisle would raise Bill Clinton as, uh, as somehow a negative to their peril. I think every poll I've ever seen shows that if President Clinton were a candidate tomorrow, he'd be reelected. He presided at that time over the longest period of prosperity, uh, uh, sustained uh, up to that point, uh, finished his term very popular and continues to be one of the most admired uh, elected officials and former elected officials and men in the world. So yeah, Debbie Wasserman Schill, as I like <laughs> to call her, she's, she's warning people off of criticizing Clinton. Yeah, well, yeah. and she's also basically saying it's okay to sexually assault people, you'll still be revered in their party. But that's not it. This one, this one is major. So this is CNN asking this question. They wanna know, is Bill Clinton sexist or does he simply just like women? We set the record straight. Uh, is Bill Clinton sexist, or does he simply like women? That he had so many <laughs> high-powered uh, women in his cabinet, everybody from uh, you know, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who he appointed to the Supreme Court, but then he had Attorney General Janet Reno, Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, uh, Donna Shalala. So uh, is he sexist? Is that a fair... So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that you know he probably didn't want to hook up with Janet Reno. Okay, so they're pointing out all of these women that he had in his cabinet, and you know that's not sexist. How, how is that? They're not talking about the sexual assaults. Uh, I'm not the talking about the women under his desk, and <laughs> I, that's the issue. You know, you talk about the cabinet women and everything, but this is far beyond sexism. This right. is about sexual assault. I mean, that is way beyond just having a condescending women towards uh, attitude towards women. No, absolutely. And this is why now Breitbart, uh, John Nolte at Breitbart points out that this is the smoking gun. The GOP establishment cannot beat Hillary Clinton, period. And he points out how Anna Navarro, who is a confidant of Jeb Bush, um, she's very much part of the GOP establishment. She was on CNN speaking with the anchor there. And the anchor said, you know, Anna, the war on women argument has worked against Republicans in the past. Do you think that this is, you know, the best defense using Bill Clinton? And she basically sort of laughs it off. And she's like, no, leave it alone. If Hillary and Bill can work it through their marriage and get it all worked out, that's their business, not ours. But this has nothing to do with Hillary or Bill Clinton. This is someone that has a repeated record of sexual assault, yeah. disrespecting women, taking advantage of young interns, mm -hmm. um, things like that. And so here we have the establishment media once again determining that certain things are off limits. It, you can't talk about, um, we saw this with Obama, 
how you weren't allowed to talk about Reverend Wright, Bill Ayers, mm -hmm. uh, Tony Resco, the Hidden Records, Benghazi. These are things you're not allowed to talk about. And so obviously the sexual assaults with Bill Clinton, they say it's off limits because he's revered and he even won a, an award from like, you know, his great work with women. And, and of course you got this double standard. I mean, when, when there were